All right, all right. We're coming in hot with another episode of Camp Content, and we are sitting today with Brandon Barnum of HOA.com. He is passionate about connecting people with solid service providers uh, from top to bottom, from loan officers, real estate agents, to service providers, to warranty uh, providers, you know, you name it. If it's around your house, uh, he is going to help you get there. So he has created something, HOA.com, that is the, uh, it's kind of the uh, metamorphosis of Nextdoor and Angie's List and Zillow, right? Which I don't know about you, but that got my head spinning. So I am super excited to sit with Brandon today and talk about HOA.com and how he uses content marketing. So welcome to the show, Brandon. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, Molly, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I'm definitely really fascinated by your whole profile here. Uh, you know, after selling refer.com <laughs> in 2019 uh, with 5 million users, like my, my very first question to you is, why would you sell a business that is seemingly so successful or was that always the plan with refer.com? Like, can you, can you tell me about that journey a little? You know, you always build a business to exit. That's really should be the, the plan for anyone as you build to sell. And we were at a point where we had built up, accomplished our goals. We have done some acquisitions and really taken it where we, we believed it needed to go. And so, you know, after really a five year run, it was on to the next. Man, and how is uh, HOA.com different from Refer.com? Yeah, very different. So at Refer.com, it was a platform for people to create a profile, but it was really all about empowering them to create partnerships with others and generate referrals with other professionals. With HOA.com, we do that too, but we focus on serving homeowners. That's really the core of it. Uh, most people know HOA stands for Homeowner Associations, <laughs> and there's 370,000 of them in the U.S. It's 53% of all homeowners who live in an HOA, but most don't love their HOA. So I was about to say, like, to you say HOA, most people are like, I don't like mine. Uh -uh. Ah, yeah. We <laughs> hear all the time. This, that, the other. They're trying to charge me for this. They totally. won't do this. And we think there's a better way to HOA, Matt. So, you know, one of the things that we're on a mission to is to really revolutionize the industry. We think all of the voting and all the spending should be blockchain based. Mm. And instead of Angie's list, it should be Molly's list. It should be Matt's list. You should have your team of professionals that you hire on a regular basis. And when somebody asks you, who do you recommend? You send them your link to your page, and that way we all know who each other uses. So we've got a lot of different elements combined, and this is just a much bigger vision and plan. Man, that's impressive. I love that. I, you know, because Angie's list is a very helpful thing for sure, but you know, your own personal list is even better because we all have nuances and how we want things done and who we want in our house and all of that. And so, um, and some of those well, Molly, platforms would be cool if you could see your neighbors and who they use, right? And if you were going to hire mm -hmm. a plumber or a painter, for example, you could see a map of all of your neighbors and see who's the top trusted painter in your neighborhood. That's what we're building. I love that. It's super smart. So tell me about how do you, how, how, how much of, when did you, you formed HOA.com four years ago? So how many no. users do you have on your platform now? There's about 12,000 in the database right now, but we're pre-launch. Well, honestly, we're launching in September and we got some major partnerships and, you know, we've got 260 million in people in the database feed that we use. And so when we go to market, it'll be big quick, but right now we're in pre-launch mode. Man, so how are you marketing this business? How are you getting HOA? I mean, if you already have 12,000 users and you're still in like beta, you haven't even launched. So how, is, how are you marketing? Is that to the previous business uh, users, refer.com, or is it totally separate? Like how are you getting in front of people? They're totally separate. Part of what we've done in our model is we built sort of that viral loop. I mean, content marketing is huge. That's what your, your program is all about. And so, you know, I realized I needed to write my own book. And so I go on a lot of these podcasts and create content and I have my team that pulls content out of the book and spins that up regularly. Uh, so that's definitely a piece. We're creating different books that are my mentors, Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul. So we're creating about 20 different titles over the next two years, different oh books God. that are specifically targeted for different industries and niches. So we've got our next one, Raving Referrals for Mortgage Pros coming out in October. So content marketing is definitely a part of that, but also 
in our platform, when professionals join, the first thing that we help them do is to formalize the referral partnerships because they know a lot of people, but typically they've never created a, an actual referral partnership. So we teach them another piece of content, this referral <laughs> partner blueprint. There we go. Referral partner blueprint where we literally walk them through how do they create their trusted team and really partner with all of the people that are serving homeowners every day. And so we teach them, how do you identify and partner with all of the other pros that are out there in homes that already have that no like trust factor? And how do you promote them and they promote you so that everybody wins together? That's amazing. Now, so I guess my, yeah. my next question is, do you sleep, Brandon? Do you sleep <laughs> at all? Like, uh, I don't know, how yeah. are you? T 20 books in two years? My gosh. Well, the coolest thing, okay, so you're gonna love this from a content perspective. The reality is, in the first book, this took me 10 years to write realistically because right. I started it, stopped it, started it. When COVID hit, I'm like, okay, I got to get that done. This book took me like 10 weeks because I actually had a, a co-author that saw the first book and said, I want to write this book with you, right? So right. she came here and I said, I've written the first book you need to customize it to dentists. That's your area of expertise. So you take that and you customize it for the dental field. I've got the same thing right now in raving referrals for mortgage pros. I've got a billion dollar mortgage producer who is taking the original book and mm -hmm. transforming it, customizing it for the mortgage industry. So the beauty is I don't have to do a lot. I just have to review it and make sure that it's quality content, but I've got contributors and collaborators that are creating the content with me and for me. It's a brilliant idea. So, Was it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Matt. No, my, my kind of just question is obviously we, we, we talked about the HOA stuff before. Are you kind of acting as that? Or are you dealing with each person's HOA at times as well? Oh, great question, Matt. So it's been phase three of our master plan, right? But um, that's accelerating. So at the moment right now, we just formed a partnership with hoamanagement.com. Okay. Uh, we're actively looking at, we've just are in the process of creating our own real estate brokerage, which will just be a referral agency. We don't plan to hire any realtors, but right. we've got, we have lots of people that need help with a realtor and so we're going to connect them and then we'll earn a per percentage of the commission without ever showing a home and that's a standard practice in the real estate industry mm -hmm. so they'll be thrilled to just get more lead flow and happy to share their typical commission with us so um, as far as the hoa component right now we're partnering with different property management companies we're looking at actually either acquiring or creating a joint venture and we're trying to figure out right now how to uberize property management but they'll have to agree to our code of conduct to our community standards because a lot of these property management companies don't put the homeowner put their interest first and that's going to be key to our success Man, I love gotcha. it. I was going to ask you next if you were planning on buying some companies and acquiring other people's, you know, uh, client bases in order to grow this thing as fast as you are. So uh, acquisition is always the fastest path to growth. So absolutely, it's part of our strategy. And then the other piece is partnership. So uh, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're focused on partnering with some of the largest brands. In right the nation, on. we have some partnerships, like we just did a partnership with Thumbtack. They have 250,000 home service pros on their platform that are now accessible in our network. So we'll do more collaboration, but acquisition is always part of the strategy, absolutely. And so, with, so, with that, it's you, you see so many on that list. I mean, granted, it was just up there for a minute, but you have like look like State Farm, Remax, credit card companies, like everything that could possibly go into it. I thought I saw Home Depot too. and. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. So when you think about it, they all serve homeowners. What do those brands have yeah, in common? Yeah. They serve consumers, but the highest sort of level of consumer is somebody that owns their own home. They're more affluent, more influential oftentimes, not always, of course, but as a general rule, it's a category of consumers that brands want to be in front of. And what we're teaching is hyper local social farming hyper local. So we're creating community pages for every neighborhood in America. And then we select 
a realtor, a mortgage pro, a financial advisor to be that trusted expert. We do background checks. We look at their ratings and reviews, their experience to ensure that they meet our community standards. But then they become that community connector in that marketplace. And then one of the cool things is we actually do live events. So we like hold barbecues and ice cream socials and these fun, festive community connection events where the homeowners help put it on, but then our pros come bring in resources and together they connect their neighbors in a way that doesn't typically happen, especially not from an online company. So yeah, we're totally unique and novel in the space. And we believe that's why people will fall in love with what we're doing. For sure. Cause it's better than getting the weekly email from the neighborhood Karen that's in that decided to take charge of everything and send out the list of complaints of what needs to be done for the week. <laughs> no complaining Karen. See, that's one of the things that we love next door. We think next door is an amazing yeah. company and they've done a great job. However, what I hear all the time from people that are users of next door is that they don't love the complaining Karens. And that's not my word, but I've heard that over and over again, yeah. is that a lot of people just go on there and complain. So ours is more of a one way. We're not creating that social media concept, but it's really us delivering content and quite frankly, curating content. This is actually a key to our success. And I don't typically talk about this, but since you're all about content, let's go there. We don't want to be the content creators. We want to be the content curators. When you think about all of these different industries, financial advisors, realtors, insurance agents, they're creating content all the time. We just need to find great content, curate it, and then deliver it down to the local community. So that's actually part of our strategic plan that Molly, I had a feeling you'd appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was just going to say, I have a lifetime ban on Nextdoor, which I'm a little bit proud of. Uh, I don't know if it's serious or not. It was a long time ago, but it was a complaining care. It was somebody complaining about um, a cancer run at the stadium that they live <laughs> next door. And I'm like, you probably shouldn't have moved next to a stadium. Just throwing that out there. And people are dying, you know, of cancer and people are running to save, like, raise money, right? Like, like you know what I mean? And so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a fine line, right? Because it is important to have communication with your neighbor and in your community. So I love the community events because it personalizes it. And like as much as Americans love to push buttons and have things show up, right? There's a lot of convenience. Yeah. We don't even have to talk anymore. We can like look at our phone and press buttons and a car will show up or food will show up or like mm -hmm. a house cleaner. Like you literally don't even have to use your voice, right? And there's there's some nice you know value in that, but then you miss that real connection because at the end of the day those people are coming into your house or they're, they're gonna see you know see your family you know in its authentic state your home and it's authentic you know and so it's important to have some trust uh you know living in costa rica you know that's even more apparent because uh, you have to be really careful who you let into your home because you right. know home invasions and crime you know those are very real things in a developing country so it's even more important about Hey, who, who did your hot water heater or who installed your security system, right? It is mm -hmm. even more of a conversation here than it would be at, mm. like in the United States. In the United States, it's sort of like fend for yourself for the most part, or you've got like mm. a Yelp or something. So it seems like you've really kind of combined yeah. the taking the worst out of those things and the best out of those things to combine it into one. Uh, and I love that community element because it really is important. At the end of the day, you know, you're, you're neighbors and, and we should behave that way, right? So having an right. ice cream sandwich or a, a cold beer with the people you're going to do business with seems fantastic. So what, what a concept, right? I mean, it just it ha doesn't happen like it should and like it used to. So recently I was at one of our community barbecues. There's about 50 people there and it was so cool because I was sitting back and I was just looking over this scene and kids are playing basketball. They had cornhole going. We even had a kickball game. Like I pulled a hammy running the bases. I hadn't played <laughs> kickball in 40 years. But the coolest part was I was looking around at one point and there's music going and I just looked around the scene and people were laughing, smiling and getting to know their neighbors and not one person was on their cell phone. Yeah, it's a but, miracle. Well, you it's interesting at this time literally. where we're more connected than ever, yet we're more disconnected than ever. And we believe that it's time to connect our communities again, because that's how we make America great again. Yeah, I, it's I like heard your, that. 
so, connecting them, so, but you're at the same time distracting them from it. It's like yeah, it's, it's, we're yeah, up to the yeah. point where like you don't need to connect people. It's like you have to distract them from doing that for so long. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> they forget. You know, people have forgotten the importance of the actual connection. Um, mm -hmm. So I have to ask, Brandon, you are doing so much, right? Like all these books, all this stuff, and you mentioned your mentor. So, you know. Where, where is, how does your background tie into all this? Because you are definitely somebody with a lot of experience, right? You've been, you bought and sold companies, you know, come whatever the, if it's plural or not, but you've got a ton of life experience. And what you're doing right now is like very next level. It's very cutting edge. It's very smart. It's very technology forward. And that's really impressive. So where, you know, where are you getting all this inspiration and knowledge from? How do you fill that cup to know what to do next? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I got to give this guy massive credit. So if you haven't read The One Minute Millionaire, you need to. Mark Victor Hansen is my mentor. This man changed my life. Um, his latest book is called Ask the Dream, the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. It's all about asking for what you want. And he's actually speaking for me tomorrow night. We're launching the Christian Business Alliance here in Phoenix. And uh, he's going to be our keynote speaker for that. So Mark's had a massive impact on my life. I hired him to be our keynote speaker for a fundraising event 19 years ago. And since that time, we've become fast friends. Uh, but Mark changed my life because he really helped me change my vision. At that time, I owned a local mortgage brokerage in Portland, Oregon, and I was really focused on Portland, Oregon. That was kind of my view and my vision of the world. And he really expanded that. And I started thinking about and made it my life's mission to uplift, inspire, and empower every person on the planet. So that's my scoreboard that I live life through. And he's just completely opened up and expanded how I think about things. He's a big thinker and having a mentor like that in your life changes things. It helps you see things you didn't see before and up your game in a big way. Yeah, well, you can't read the label from inside the jar, right? So, uh, you know, I, it, it definitely is super helpful to have some assistance like that and mentorship. I hear your dog is in the background. I'm just amazed it's not my dog. I have four puppies, so it would have been it would have been me if it wasn't you, Brandon. So don't don't worry. Um, so let's talk about all this content marketing because you must be doing a lot, right? You got all these books coming out. Like, let's let's start with the books. How are you marketing that? content how are you marketing those books it's you know it's the the base of the book which is brilliant I, i'm a big smarter not harder fan so i love i yeah. love this whole theory but but now you're marketing to dentists you're marketing to loan officers those are very different people right you know like i used to be a loan officer back in the day my previous life i spent 13 years in real estate finance actually so uh, one of the many hats that i've worn but they are very different than dentists look thank god so how are you managing all these different streams of content and marketing to different people like how are you navigating all of that i have teams i mean nothing gets done without a team if you want to build a great brand you've got to hire great people so i have marketing a marketing team a digital marketing director somebody that's only managing social media something that somebody that's managing content creation but you know you ask about the books and here's what i learned number one mark you know, Mark sold over 500 million books through the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And so this man it. knows how to sell books. And when I was writing raving referrals, he said, don't write a book, build a brand. Ooh. And so the first book, I had a bunch of experts and influencers. And essentially, I had all of these people, people that I know that I wanted to feature in the book. And these became our JV partners, if you will, promoting what we're doing. Right. So right, that's right. what I did in the first book. Now, the second book, I got smarter and I went, OK, that was great. But now when I think about the dental space, who are the recommended resources? Who are all the companies that are serving dentists all day long, right? So we started featuring them. And then the next thing I did is went, okay, who are the influencers of the dental industry? The podcasters. Right. So here's all the dental podcasts. And I see my book is falling apart because I'm using it so much. But here's all the podcasts that you should be sharing, right? And, and really, we promote them. And guess what? They invite me on their show just like this. For sure. For sure. Brilliant. What is your so strongest? Build your, the, the, Molly, the, the message here is build your go-to-market strategy into your content, right? Like you're doing that right now. You're inviting me onto your show. Do you think I'm going to share your show with our people? Absolutely. 
And this is one of the top 21 co-marketing campaigns that we teach in the referral partner blueprint. When you create partnerships, a lot of people just go to a networking meeting like a BNI and they create a partnership and then there's no action after the fact. What we've done is identified 21 different co-marketing campaigns see if I can hear, show it here real quick, that people should be using to cross promote each other, right? So podcast is on that list, but it's how do you create an actual action plan so that when you've got somebody that you want to promote, that you're going into action, you're promoting them and they're promoting you and content is king and queen when it comes to cross yeah. promotion. I love it. You said and queen, because I always say oh, queen, yeah. but we can't leave the king out. We got to have them both in there. So I love that. It's both. Uh, 21 co-marketing solutions. It sounds like I need to get a copy of that book. I think it's brilliant. And, uh, you know, I talk a lot about relationships, right? And and that to me is the core. It's like, you know, yes. this is a relationship right now, right? Getting to hang out with you for 30 minutes, right? Learn more about your business, see what you're doing, get really excited about it. Who knows what business I might send you or vice versa, right? And so it's always about uh, the strategic relationship or just relationships in general, right? I, I, the older I get, the more I realize that your professional and your personal life is really, a, you know, a, a sum of your relationships. You know, uh, if you like your clients, if you like the work you do, if you like the people you work with, uh, then that makes it a lot easier. The quality of your business will be a lot better. Uh, and same thing, obviously, with, with your personal life. So, um, what are, what are the most effective tools that you have used? I know we've talked a lot about already, like going on podcasts is that, that seems like probably a big one, but what is your, what are your top three content marketing, uh, game plans or, or resources, I should say. Yeah, podcasts are huge, definitely. And I'm always looking for great content to curate again. It takes a long time sometimes to create the content. Things like ChatGPT make it easier. A lot of people are, you know, creating something there and then customizing it in their own voice, but that quickens the process because they're not starting with a white page. So I'm always looking for great content to just share and repurpose, retweet, if you will. Although now that it's X, I don't know if it's still a tweet, is it? I don't know. It's a re, re X. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, what they're Now that Twitter is X.com, I'm not sure. Yeah, what is yeah. that? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I think podcasts are huge. And then I love live events. I mean, there's no such greater thing than power of live events. Now, again, we don't like to be event producers. We like to be mm -hmm. event promoters. I like to partner with somebody that's already having an event and come on their stage and share what we're doing and then bring more people to the party. Part of what we're doing in building this big ecosystem is that we have a powerful promotional platform and that should be part of your strategy, right? No matter if you're listening right now, no matter how big your audience is, share that with other people, partner with other people and look for ways to give and make a difference to them and they'll do the same for you. It's incredible. How many people are on your team? Uh, if for HOA.com, we have 25 right now. And then do and you we have just hired a new kind of new C-suite. In the last 90 days, I have a new COO, CRO, and CTO. Wow. Whew. That's a lot. That's a lot. You, you Do you sleep, though? Seriously. Like, how are you finding time <laughs> yeah. to manage all this? I sleep. I don't need to sleep as much. And now that I've got this new C-suite in place, quite frankly, my role has changed. I used to lead a morning huddle every morning at 8.30 a.m. And I'd have about half of our team, usually around 12 people, that we would huddle up every morning at, at 8.30 a.m. And now I don't lead that group. Um, I have our COO does that. We've shifted it from a morning huddle into a bi, bi week, twice a week. And then we also have the sales team that meets mornings. So we've kind of shifted from one group to two, but I don't lead either of those conversations anymore. So, you know, my focus is right now we're finishing a fundraising round. So I'm doing a little bit of that, but mostly it's promotion and partnerships. I do about five of these podcasts a week to kind of evangelize and spread the message. And that leads to partnership opportunities. Companies see what we're doing and they're like, I want in, how do I get in? So that's, that's a common occurrence because of content marketing. Well, you know, it's the authenticity of it, right? Like t talking about ChatGPT, like AI will never be able to replace you, right? Like it might no. be able to get your brand voice, but it can't replace the power of like hanging out with us right now and talking about That's your right. business and talking about 
um, like what you said about being at the barbecue and looking out, uh, you know, for years I owned a production company and, you know, there really is no better feeling in the world than just knowing you helped facilitate the space and the stage for something like that to happen, right? Like it's, you know, for me, it was very similar. It was never about like being on stage and thanking everybody. It's a, it's in those quiet moments of looking back and being like, man, this is so cool. People aren't on their phones, they're smiling. Like yeah. you helped facilitate some real connection and authenticity. And I think that like uh, really shines through in you and your business and, and everything you're doing. Uh, I'm not even in the home ownership business, but I'm trying to figure out how I can continue to work with you too. Cause you, you got it going on, Brandon, you, you're working hard and good for you for making that decision with the C-suite. I know that was, was, is, and probably will be difficult at times, but reclaiming your life uh, is also really important. You know, you, you, you can't work all the time, right? Even if you enjoy it. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah. And I coach a fair number of people, both internally and externally. And I'm not a coach for hire. I don't do that, but just people I'm mentoring in business. And one of the things that I often say is you need to be thinking about who, not how. As an entrepreneur, our natural inclination is thinking, how do I get this done? And you've got to be shifting your thinking to who can get this done well, high performance, high productivity, but how do you delegate more to create more results? I love that. I think that's excellent advice. Let the professionals do what they do. You know, we, we come up against that a lot in the podcasting space because there's a lot of like, here's how to start a podcast on your own and edit it on your own and not pay anybody and get free software. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, uh, you know, are you going to do your taxes and your oil change too? And maybe play the violin at the ceremony later. You know what I mean? Like at some point you have to delegate uh, and if you're doing a podcast for your business to represent your business, then that's not really something that you should be outsourcing to Fiverr or mm -hmm. trying to do yourself, <laughs> yeah. right? Because like your time is much more valuable than editing audio, right? And, uh, yeah. you know, people go to school for that. That's a whole career, audio engineering. And so to think you're just going to casually do that on the side, right? And so it's, it's a prime example of... Uh, outsourcing, right? Like let the professionals do what they do. And then instead of focusing on, you know, the production, focus on who you're interviewing and why, and then the runway afterwards, how are you going to maintain the relationship and, and eliminate the, uh, the, the, the heavy handiwork yourself and let, let people who can do a better job do that work. And so delegation is always really important, but um, can also be difficult. You know, a lot of people have a real association to their content or product or whatever, their, their baby, right? And nobody else can do it the way they do. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you want any of your time back, you have to learn how to delegate and let people do what they're good at, uh, including yourself, right? Uh, Amen. So, Focus excellent. on your skills and your strengths and let experts do the rest. Exactly. Well, and if you when you focus on your skills and then you, then you can make more money and then you can afford to delegate, right? Because a lot of small businesses right. are thinking, of course, I want to hire somebody who's who's paying for that, right? But I think if you focus on, you know, the straightest path to the money, generating some revenue, then you free up resources to be able to hire people and delegate. But, um, you know, to your point, strategic relationships often don't cost anything at all, right? So it's a matter of being uh, resourceful and strategic with the relationships that you do have. That's it. You got it, Molly. Bingo. Well, Brandon, uh, before we go, tell people, uh, you know, who, who are you looking to hang out with? Who, do, who would you like to do some more business with and how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, so we're always looking for really tops of companies that have national presence. That's our first ask, right, is we're getting introduced to the senior vice president for Remax, for example. And so companies that have a national footprint is always first, regional second, but companies that serve homeowners, whether it's real estate, mortgage, insurance, finance, painter, plumber, franchisors uh, are a great fit for us. So those are the types of, of companies that we're looking to uh, partner with in the B2C space, mostly more than the B2B side. Uh, and as far as how they can find me, you can check me out at brandonbarnum.com. That's kind of got all my links, links to different stuff. If you want to you know, book me for your podcast, if you're listening, you can find that there. If, you, if you've if you got a strategic partnership opportunity, you can schedule a call with me right at bookingbrandon.com. There you go. That's amazing. I gave you two I'm... links there. BrandonBarnum.com is kind of my about. It's got different links. And within that, you'll find BookingBrandon.com, which is my Calendly link. 
Well, I love it. Well, anybody listening to this would love to have you on their show because you are a fantastic guest. So uh, thank you for being on the show and sharing all this information about your business. It's definitely motivating me to get some work done today uh, and <laughs> focus on some of the relationships that I've been trying to curate over the last few weeks. So uh, thank you, Brandon. Uh, we really appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully. Oh, thank you, Molly. And I would say thank you for doing what you're doing. You are empowering people. When, you know, when I look at my vision of empowering, equipping every person on the planet, it's not me, it's we. We can do it together. But it takes everyone that's listening to share your voice, to get out there and create your content. And together we can make a difference and really transform this planet to be the change that we see for the world. So get out there, make a difference. And you, Molly and Matt, you guys are doing it. So thanks for your efforts. Thank you. You know, our, you. our uh, tagline is listening is the revolution. So we're, 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 and we're heart cast media. You know what I mean? It says it all that. in the name, right? So yeah. I love your, I love your mission, Brandon, and uh, I hope we can help support it in some way. So thank you. Oh, you already are. Thank you both. Have a great day. God bless you. You too. All right. Thanks for tuning in to Camp Content. Nope. We will check you again real soon. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all your support with the podcast. We hope that we you're finding it uh, in informational and helpful. I love talking with business owners and understanding how they do things, how they run their business, what's going on. Uh, and so hopefully you like getting a peek behind the curtain as well and learn about how they're doing content marketing. That was an awesome conversation with Brandon. We're super looking forward to following up with him and learning more about HOA.com. Maybe he'll even make it to Costa Rica one day, fingers crossed. So until next time, be excellent to each other. And if you found this content valuable, please consider tagging us and sharing it on LinkedIn and saying what's up and we will respond in kind. Have a good one. Produced by HeartCast Media.